since the streaming era really kind of went full force around the pandemic, more and more, a lot of the studios, we saw a lot of like Netflix, more, wanting to make movies that are just direct to streaming, right? Even making some like $200 million plus movies that fell on their faces, but $200 million plus movies that just went straight to streaming. Matter of fact, last week we talked about Doug Lyman talking about his new movie, Roadhouse. He's like, why is this movie not going to theaters? Because Amazon made the idiotic decision to put it on streaming only. <clears throat> and Rob and I have been talking about this for years, even before the data came out. It seems to make common sense that if you want your movie to do well on streaming, you would put it in theaters first. Fair or unfair? Fair or unfair? Because it may be unfair. When a movie goes to theaters, to audiences, it gives it a stamp of legitimacy. John, are you saying movies that go to streaming aren't legitimate? I'm not saying that. Like I said, that could be an unfair. But the truth is, to a lot of average viewers and audience members at home, if a movie's been in movie theaters, that makes it more legitimate to them. Again, that might be unfair, but, but it is what it is. Well, more and more data started to come out to prove that point, that when movies go to theaters first, they will do better on streaming later, rather than dropping them on streaming. Well, in Variety and Deadline ran a story today about the Nielsen ratings, who put out their now final definitive report in the world of streaming of 2023. And they listed the top 10 streamed movies of 2023. And here's a little spoiler. Ain't none of them were streaming launched exclusives. None of them. Every single one of them had a theatrical release. Let's go over and take a look at this. It might surprise you, the most viewed streamed movie of 2023 was Moana. <clears throat> and you know what? I'm all for it. I love this movie. How old is that? God, was it five, six, seven years now? Probably even more than that. My, more than that now. We got a live action one coming. Second was Encanto. Now, Encanto, there's two films on this list that have a little asterisk. Encanto was released in theaters and on Disney Plus on the same day. It did day and date, but still it had a theatrical component, a theatrical advertising campaign, all that kind of stuff. The Super Mario Brothers was number three. Yeah. Elemental, which is wonderful, was number four. Minions, The Rise of Gru was number five. Sing 2 was number six. Frozen was number seven. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever was number eight. Avatar, The Way of Water was number nine. And Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Remember I said there's two movies that have a little asterisk? Knives Out only had a two week release if you remember. And then it went over to Amazon, but it still had a theatrical release first. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than a third on my cell bill than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash camp. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. And again, if you look at this list, ain't one movie on this list was one of these $150 million, $200 million flouting direct-to-streaming movies. None of them. I, again, it's just... Rob, you and I have both been saying this for years. The data continues to enforce the point. If you want your movie to do well on streaming, don't put it exclusively to streaming. Put it in theaters first. Your movie will do better. I know. What do you think about the list? 
Well, I've been talking about this on my own show for the last couple of days. And look, we you, you covered this story, but Jordan Peele saw Monkey Man, which is Deb Patel's directorial debut, called it John Wick in Mumbai. He, his own company, Monkey Paw, that's based at Universal, he put, rather than get his own movie set up or another movie set up or something that he directly benefits from, I mean, he will benefit from this too, he got his own company to acquire this movie from Netflix and got Universal to pony up the cash, and they're putting it out in April in theaters. And I cannot wait to see it. And then. that trailer was bonkers good, and you look at it and you go, well, he knows something because he saw it. And you had somebody stick up their stick out their neck, stick out their company, stick out their their production deal, their shingle with Universal, and 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 put their money where their mouth is or whatever. And then at the same time, I I can't say who which streamer. I was sent a script to read a couple days ago by somebody. Oh, and, so and your script's working. I know. I read this script. <laughs> this script, dude. I cannot stop thinking about the script. It, it call it a sci-fi horror script. Uh, I can't say anything about it other than the fact that I want to see this in a theater on opening night with an audience that doesn't know anything about it. And it's they're making it, it's a streamer. And I'm like, God damn it. I mean, it, 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 I, I want to see this so bad with an audience. I want to see Monkey Man with an audience. And I get to see it with an audience. I want to see, I watch a trailer for Roadhouse. I want to see that with an audience. How much not fun is it going to be watching Conor McGregor fight Jake Gyllenhaal if I don't have an audience full of people <laughs> screaming at every punch, at every <laughs> hit, at every connection, at every bone-crunching sound effect? And you know what? Um, also, these cable movies or the, the streaming movies, they don't benefit from marketing dollars at the studios. The marketing of these films is what ingrains the knowledge that these movies exist into our population. The Gray Man, 220 million bucks. How many people even knew it was coming out? There was no, there was a trailer, but Netflix trailers are not something people are seeking out. Mm. But a theatrical trailer that's put on YouTube by, by a uh, a uh, studio gets picked up by all these different things. So they they spread across YouTube, they spread across uh, Instagram. What a waste of money if they don't do that. Monkey Man is a good example. Another good example of a current movie. The new Mean Girls movie was supposed to go straight to streaming. Yeah. Right? Another example of... And they saw the, the, all the data. They were like, you know what? We want this to do well on streaming. But if we really want it to do well on streaming, we should probably put it in theaters first. I believe this movie cost in the neighborhood of like $15 million to make. 15 to 20. Take a look at this. The box... This thing has already made $83.4 million. It's more than made. It's it's already a profitable movie for the studio, and it hasn't even gone to streaming yet. So now they're going to put this movie on streaming, probably in about a month. It's going to go to streaming, and it's going to get way more eyeballs on it now on streaming than it would have otherwise. And they're going to have twenty million bucks in profit in their pockets already from this. Uh, and and I think we're going to start seeing this happen. Why Amazon doesn't do this with Roadhouse is completely beyond me. Okay, here's another one for you that's coming up. So the new Glenn Powell, Sydney Sweeney rom com. As of yesterday, Bach, uh, uh, it was reported that it's made $103 million. That blew my mind. I looked at that the other a, day. A rom-com, Sydney Sweeney, 103. Glenn Powell. Oh, by the way, at this point, it is officially at 126. Yeah, that blew my mind. Okay, $126 million. And now, it's check very this out. cheap to make. So Glenn Powell, obviously a movie star because of Top Gun Maverick. He has co-written a movie with Richard Linklater. Called and the trailer Hit for that just dropped last called week. Called Hitman. Yep. By all accounts, that movie is terrific. Everyone who's seen it coming out of the festival circuit... Oh, it's great. Guess where that movie's going? Streaming. Yeah. And coming on the heels, $126 million on a rom-com with Sidney Sweeney. That guy's a movie star. You could, why, maybe it will, but if we go back, I did a story about um, Barbarian and Evil Dead Rise. Right. Both movies that were direct, going to be direct to streaming. Both of those movies based on their uh, test screenings. Evil Dead Rise made 147 million globally, and it was going to go direct. It was originally theatrical, then it was direct to streaming. Based on how it turned out, the studio looked at it to their credit and said, "Nope, we're putting it out theatrical. 147 million dollars globally." Why? So, and they're ahead, wondering why streaming's not profitable. Also, Mean Girls was 36 million the budget. Oh, okay. I can't remember if it was the 15 million dollar budget one or if uh, Beekeeper. That might have been the cheaper one, but still. I mean, they, they've profited. And here's the thing. It's not an either-or proposition. 
It's not either you put it in theaters and try to do well there, or you put it on streaming and try to do well on streaming. They're connected. You put it in theaters, your streaming numbers will be better than they would have been. And uh, the data just keeps pointing at that. And we'll see if Amazon ultimately changes their mind and gets Roadhouse in theaters where it should be. I mean, the only the only thing I can think of, either one, it's not good, which, I mean, he said this. The, uh, he thinks test, this is his best movie. Yeah, he said the test numbers are good. Or two, maybe the toxic masculinity that's on display in the trailer is not necessarily something that they want to promote. Oh, yeah, Although I, I would yet, say, I've seen so many people online saying that Roadhouse trailer's all woke. Why is a girl own the bar? Why is Dalton working for woke? A girl? Are you kidding? That movie is all about toxic masculinity and how great it is. No, see, here's the theory that we pitched on Friday. It's a work that Amazon fully intends to release this in theaters, oh. and they're like, "Hey, uh, Tony, why don't you uh, why don't you write this article?" And, and, and be real mad that this should be in theaters. And then to get everybody talking about it and get everybody yelling, yeah, this movie should be in theaters. And then like in a few weeks, we'll go, you know what? He's right. We should put this in theaters. Okay, I, you know what? To the I, mean, I don't know that. That's my take. I'd be so I happy to be wrong. I'd, I'd love to see. And, and you know what? Kudos to the William Castle School of Promotion. I'm all for that. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.